Hi and welcome to this video about objective and subjective data. So the key idea here that we're really trying to explore is that idea of data and how we categorize it. Um, and you can also see by the areas of learning down the bottom here that it's important to understand the difference between objective and subjective data because we're then going to build on that um, in, I guess, further videos. Okay, so let's start with the definition of objective data. So these are data that are based on measurements of a participant's response. Now they can be either directly observed um, and they can also be verified by a researcher. Okay, so um, it could be that idea like the picture over here. They are looking at how many oranges are on a plate and there are four. You know, there's no way to negotiate that or lie about it or have different interpretations. There are four, they can be observed, and the researcher can also come over and say, yes, there are four. Okay. Now, objectivity eliminates personal factors that may distort the data. This is a nice way of saying um, it prevents people from lying. It's also talking about um, different people's interpretations of things. So if it's objective, you can see it, you can count it, you can measure it it is there, all right? it's objective and there's no way to kind of interpret that differently. It is considered to be free from bias, okay, as well, so it's, it's harder for participants to manipulate their data. Okay, now subjective data on the other hand, these are based on self-reports provided by participants themselves, okay, they're personal, it's often not possible to verify them. Okay, so you can see on that picture over here, you've got the same two children, they're eating a piece of cake, it is the exact same cake, and they have two very different interpretations of that cake and whether it tastes good. Okay, um, it assumes that participants' responses are honest and an accurate recall of what they're asked. Okay, so it, it means they, they can't lie, they have to respond to that question really accurately. Now, subjective data are often biased and they're really difficult to interpret accurately. You know, it's hard to figure out exactly what's going on because it's based on that participant's own self-report. So here's a, um, I guess, a picture to illustrate this. So on the objective data over here, um, the researcher can say, yep, Susan has a temperature of 39.3 and she's crying. Okay, that is objective data. You're collecting a temperature um, and you can see that she's crying, which is a behaviour. On the other hand, over here, subjective data, you've got Susan herself saying, I have a really sore head and I feel tired. Okay, there are no objective measures there. The researcher can't verify that. He can't, you know, walk up to her and, her and interrogate her and say, you know, are you lying to me? There's no way of knowing if Susan's lying or not in that situation with just subjective data. Okay, so let's look at a few differences here in some examples. So for objective data, you could have things like physiological measures. It could be heart rate. It could be the amount that someone perspires or sweats, and you could be measuring that. It could be a behavioral count, so the number of times that you're performing a certain action. Or it could be a score on some kind of test, and it must be a standardized test. So it could be something like intelligence or personality. Okay, on the other hand, subjective. Some examples of self-reports are things like questionnaires, um, surveys, interviews, and focus groups. And we will be talking about all of these in due course. Okay, so over here are some more examples. And if you would like to see um, a bit more detail talking about these, please follow this link down the bottom. But that first one here, so participants reported how often they watch television per week. This is subjective, right? It's based on their own response. Next one, uh, researchers measured the number of hours children watch television per week. That is objective. So you have the same situation. One is subjective, one is objective. Okay, if you want to read this more, just press pause and have a browse through. Okay, if you would like some more information, as always, please see me, all the textbooks, or the website. See you guys.